Good evening, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Pain, and welcome to Let's Learn Python. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific sections or examples. Today we'll be using Python 2.7.4, and you can download it from python.org slash get it. Today we're going to focus on the A star algorithm. This will build heavily on past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch them again if anything is unclear. All right, so the A star algorithm, what is it? Well, A star is an artificial intelligence algorithm that is used to find the shortest possible route from a start state to an end state. This can be applied to character pathfinding, to puzzle solving, or to any number of things. It really has countless applications. All right, so how does it work? Well, you have a start state, a goal state, how you measure your progress towards the goal, and how you generate your next steps towards the goal. So again, that's a start state, an end state, measuring progress, and generating potential options to step through. To describe this visually, let's say we have a start point and an end point on a grid. To us, we can see a clear straight path from the start to the end, but the algorithm cannot. Instead, the algorithm discovers the path through a series of steps towards the goal. All right, so what's the programming logic behind the algorithm? First, we generate a list of children as the next possible step towards the goal. We then store all the children in an ordered list or a priority queue based on how we are measuring our distance to the goal. In the case of our graph, we are actually using distance. We then select the closest child to the goal and repeat the process of generating children until the goal has been reached. Keep in mind that the priority queue is storing all possible children that could be used and does not discard any options so that if one path doesn't work, we can explore other paths that branch from the original. A way to see this is what if we had a U-shaped obstacle that blocked our path? Then we could not pass straight towards the goal, but instead we'd have to grow around it. And so this is where the older children would come into play. Two most important things to remember about the A-star algorithm is how you measure your distance to the goal and how you generate children. All right, so let's try an example. All right, so for this example, we're gonna feed in a jumble of random letters. And then for the goal, we're gonna have a different arrangement of those letters. What it's going to do is it's going to switch two letters that are right next to each other in a specific sequence to go from the start state to the goal state. So a simple case of this would be if we had the letters H, M, A, and then we had the algorithm arrange them to ham. Now we know that there would only be one step in this process, so this would be a, a nice simple way to check if our algorithm is working. After that, we can test a more complex case. To avoid possibly boring you to death and wrapping out this hundred lines of code by hand, I've actually prepared it beforehand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comb through this code very carefully. The numbers are on the left, so if you want to, and I strongly encourage it, please pause the video and type this out yourself so you have a copy on your machine. I entitled this file astar.py, and much of this code will be recyclable, so it's great to have as reference for any other coding you do in the future. Again, I encourage you to pause the video and type this all out yourself. And by the way, in case you're curious, I'm using Sublime Text 2. I'll put a link in the description so you can download it for yourself. This is my favorite free text editor that's out there. It compiles Python and everything. It's perfect. I strongly recommend using it. All right, so what's happening in this code? Well, this first line up here says hashtag exclamation point USR slash bin slash inv space Python. And what this is, is it's a single line of code to prepare this code for Unix based machines. So that'd be Mac or Linux machines. This is just so the script's ex executable on its own. It really does nothing for Windows users, but it's a good practice to get into. Next, we have from queue import priority queue. Priority queue is a data structure which we'll be using down below, and it's just a structure that organizes items based on a priority I set. Think of it like a dictionary of lists, um, where I can have a key value of one and then have a whole bunch of other stuff, like a list of objects, to the right of it. Next, I have a class entitled state, and what this is doing is this is a base class that's going to be used to store all the imperative stuff that you would use 
for just about any a star algorithm. In the constructor, you pass in a value and a parent, and then we have keyword values of start, goal, and solver, all set to zero. This is so that if we don't have a parent for like the initial start state, we can instead override it by plugging in the start state manually, the goal state manually, and the solver manually. Really, this is only for the first start state. After this, each child will be able to grab the info from its parent object. And all we're really going to need is the parent object and the value of that current child. Next, we have the children. The children is a list of going to be all neighboring possibilities. So in the case of the grid, the children would be the squares immediately next to our start square. And the children of those squares would be the ones immediately to the next of those. Now you may be thinking to yourself, but wouldn't that cause duplicates of stuff? That issue will be covered later. Next, we store the current parent, the value, and the distance. This self.dist is actually is not really going to be set here. This is just a placeholder. It's actually meant to be set in substates or subclasses of the state. So next, we check to see if the parent is plugged in. If the parent is plugged in, then we know we want to copy the parent's path um, to our path. And this right here, this brackets with the colon in the middle, is actually going to allow us to make a copy of that list into our own list. If this were not here, this would actually, this self.path would actually be the same value as this guy. And so when we made changes to this path, it would affect the parent path and screw everything up. So that's why this is important. This is a great way to make a copy of a list. Then we're going to store our own value into the uh, path. So this path is going to be basically building on itself and keeping track of where we're at. Then we store the start state and the goal state. And I just realized that I had some garbage code in here, which I'll go ahead and delete. Initially, I, I saved this uh, solver, self.solver. I thought this was necessary, but it actually is not. This is garbage code. It doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead and delete that. And delete it from up top in the arguments list. And save it. Perfect. So that's it for this if statement. The else statement is if there is no parent, and this is just going to say, hey, we're going to start a path that's a list of objects, starting with our current value. Then we're going to store the start state and the goal state for checking down the line. Finally, we have two simple empty functions, get distance and create children. These are not going to be defined in the base class of state, but instead in the subclass state string below. Okay. Okay, so scrolling down. So again, I'm going to delete that extra solver in the uh, in the constructor because it's no longer necessary. Okay, and save it. So in the constructor of this subclass, we're just initializing the base class, which is just the state class up above. And finally, we override the distance variable that we set up above by calling this function get distance, which we define right here. And this function is really just going to be for measuring our distance to our goal. All right, so what's going on in this code? Well, at the beginning of this class, we have a check to see if we have reached our goal. And if we have, then we simply return zero. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through each letter of the goal. So right here, we get the current letter, and then we find out the index of that letter in our current value, and then subtract it from wherever we're currently at. And so that will give us the distance that the letter is from its target placement. And then we simply return that distance. And that is stored in our self.dist variable. Next, we have a function to generate our children. So I guess you could call this the sex function. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. So in this function, we say, if there are no children, then we're going to go ahead and generate the children. This is just an extra precaution so that we don't accidentally create children twice. And so in this function, all we're doing is we're going through every possibility or every possible arrangement of the letters. And the way we do that is by switching the second letter and the first letter of every pair of letters. That's it. And then we tack on the beginning and then we tack on the end. And then we have a new arrangement of letters stored in val. This right here just makes a copy of val. Finally, we create a child and store the value we just generated in that child. And we pass in self to store the parent of the child. And finally, we add that child to our children list. Scrolling down some more, we have our A star solver. 
So in the constructor, we ask that it be passed in the start state and the end state. We don't know what they could be, but we need to store them. Self.path is going to store the final or solution for getting from the start state to the goal state and the exact sequence that it takes to get there. The visited queue is going to keep track of all children that we have visited so we don't visit any children twice and we don't get caught in a forever loop. Next we have our priority queue which we'll get into in just a little bit and finally we store that start and goal state with, within class variables. Next we have our solve function. We create our start state and again since this start state doesn't have any parent state what it does is we have to pass in a whole bunch more variables and zero in the spot where there would be a parent. So its current value is set to start. There is no parent passed in. There is a start and goal state that are set in. And lastly, we go ahead and delete this, this comma self because we don't need the solver in the solution anymore. So delete that. Next, we have this variable count. And this variable count is kind of odd. I'm not entirely sure it was necessary, but the reference code that I found online suggested that this was necessary. And all this is doing is just adding one every time we create a new child to just kind of create an ID for what um, child it is that we're, we are creating. Next below we have the priority queue and it says priority queue dot put. And this put is basically like add. Go ahead and add in whatever we toss in. And then we pass in a tuple. And this tuple contains zero, count, and a start state. The zero is the priority number that we want. And since there's no other items in the priority queue, this zero doesn't really matter. We could put in 10 or 100 if we want, doesn't matter. And then we have the start state, and the start state is what we just created up above. And that's where we're going to be putting all of our states into that third space in the tuple. Next, we have a while loop, and this is where all the magic happens. So what's going on here in the while loop is saying while not self path, in other words, while the path is empty and while self dot priority queue dot queue size. So in other words, while the priority queue has a size, we're going to continue through this loop. Okay. After that, we have closest child, a new variable, and we're going to set it equal to self dot priority queue dot get open close parentheses and then an array parameter that says two. And what this is doing is, as you may recall right up here, in our two slot of this tuple, we have the state itself. So that's why we throw on the two at the end. What this priority queue is doing is it's saying, hey, get the topmost valued state from the priority queue. In this case, it's a tuple. And then give me the second item so this actually that state. Now that we have our closest child, we're going to go ahead and create the children for that state. Then we're going to go ahead and add this child to the visited queue. And this visited queue is just meant to keep track of all children that we visited. Then we go through each child that was created for this current state. Then we say if the child has not been visited or if this child values is not in the visited queue, then we're going to go ahead and proceed and we're going to boost up the ID count up one. We're going to check if the distance is so this statement saying if the child's distance is at zero and does not exist, then we have found our solution. And we say uh, set the self path to the child's path and then break this loop. And that break will cause us to break out of this for loop, after which we will go into the while loop and we will f see that we have the path set and so we'll break out of the while loop. Finally, we have a condition that says if not self path. So if we still have not found a path yet, then we know that the priority queue condition broke. There were no more children in the priority queue, and so that's what caused the loop to break. And therefore, there is nothing in the self path, so we have reached an error. And this is just an error output, so it just says goal of blank is not possible. That's all. And finally, we return that path. So that's it for the solve function. Now let's scroll down just a little bit more, and we have our final bit of code that actually calls everything into existence. So we check if we're in the main file. And since we are, we're going to go ahead and set our start state and our goal state to these jumble of letters. So to keep this simple, I'm just going to type our example before, HMA. And then we're going to have our goal state, uh, BHAM. Save it. And then we have a statement that just says starting to let us know that the program is indeed starting. And after that, we initialize the solver. 
and then we call the main function to solve it. And after that, we just output the results. All right, let's go ahead and save it. Run. All right, and it worked beautifully. So here it says starting. Step zero, which was the start state, was HMA. And step one was the ham. And we can tell exactly what switch right there. Perfect. So let's go ahead and jumble this up. Let's try a more complex example. We want the solution to be A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? And let's start with something different. Let's go C, D, A, B, F, E. Save it. And now let's run it to see if it's working. Okay, perfect. So our algorithm worked flawlessly. And let's see what happened. It started out with that start state, and then it switched the A and the D letter, and then it switched the A and the C letter, and our first letter was matched into place. And then after that, it switched the B and the D, and then it switched the C and the, the B, and that got us even closer to our results. And then finally, it switched the E and the F, and then we reached our goal state. Beautiful! Isn't that cool? I think that's like one of the coolest things on earth. <laughs> a computer solved a problem for us. All right, so why use it? Well, there's so many ways and so many applications that you could use this algorithm. Well, you could make non-playable characters and enemies in video games much smarter and much more believable. You can save countless hours of trial and error in puzzles to, to actually have this algorithm solve it for you. So does that mean you should cheat? Yes. I think you should use this program. If you can use this algorithm to cheat, absolutely do it. Because that's some bullshit homework if they're giving you something that you can solve with this. Alright, so thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final challenges as you are a brilliant programmer. I'm sure it will be a piece of cake for you. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you. And please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive.